Alrighty, folks, how's it going? Uh, welcome to the live stream today. Um, today, we're going to be finishing up uh, the Cello Concerto by Saint Songs. Um, we're going to be looking at the third movement, the final movement of the concerto. So, without further ado, let's take a look. So, in the sheet music, the third movement, mm, technically, it starts at letter J, but I would argue that letter J is still, is, mm, it's, 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 it's a transition moment, and you'll see why. So letter J, if you take a look, is actually, um, this, it's the same phrase as one of the themes in the first movement. So if we take a look, let's zoom in a little bit. We're in tenor clef. And we start with the B, right? So B, third finger. So if you take a, so let me continue. one we've heard it before and in fact it is back here in letter B it's the same thing as letter B so if you take a look we're gonna keep the same fingerings and everything all right so third finger Third finger, two, one. Second finger. Here it will be two, four, one, one. And here it's the same thing, one, three, three. The only difference is right here, and we will talk about it. Let me highlight this section. So J. Actually, you know what? Let's take a look at what letter B was. Huh. Letter B was yellow as well. All right, so we're going to color it in yellow. J until K, right? So that's going to be our transition. Oh, what happened? There we go. So... That's about, this is going to be our transition moment. So, one, two, uh, one, two, shift. And then we're going to shift to first position down here. And then this, uh, uh, run. So that is actually not as difficult as it sounds. Uh, the trick, the fingering is a little bit tricky, but um, I'll explain how I think about that. This section. So first, let me write the fingerings. Like that. Okay. So, I'm gonna highlight the important notes. So if you know your chords, um, this is 
going to be let's let's see if you can figure out the chord uh, what kind of chord this is so I'm just gonna focus on the notes that gets repeated right so I'm thinking in groups of this three this all right let's see how I can so I'm thinking about this 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 and this or even better I'm only thinking about really the first note of the groups of triplets like that. So if we just look at the, the group, the first notes of each group, it's going to be F sharp, A, C natural, uh, D sharp, F sharp, A, and then C, e, D sharp, and then E natural to end. So if you if you take a listen to this uh, chord. This is actually what we call a diminished chord. So a diminished chord, uh, if we just remember that they're uh, minor six apart. So those are the main notes that you should think about. Everything else, it's basically half step ornamentation down. So. Just remember that. So how you can practice, the, the hard part is on the A string, especially past the, this, the F sharp. Remember that everything is just, I think of it, that there's two, three half step to go. So one, two, three. One, two, three. And the last one is just um, a half step, right? So just practice those notes in groups. I would just practice the without the triplets. Like that. Just so you can get used to the different uh, the, the real positions that you have to shift to, right? All right, so after that, uh, we go to basically the end of that transition. So one. Uh, let's see, sorry, I have the real sheet music here. I believe it's all down bow, yep. So here, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Stay in rhythm. One, and one, two, and one. All right, so that's the transition section. I'm not gonna play it again uh, because it's pretty much the same as the first movement. Um, so let's actually get to the real, uh, uh, meat of the third movement. All right. So letter K is actually where it act, uh, starts. And I'm just going to mark it to, uh, L. But first, let's take a look at it. We're in a new tempo here. So... Let's figure out how it goes first. Starts up bow, by the way. 
The orchestra has two big beats. Boom, boom. That makes sense. Okay, almost done. All right, so that's going to be the first time through the phrase, right? So let's read through it together. So... Open string. And two. Extension here, F natural, right? F sharp, full step, G sharp, G sharp, half step up is ha uh, a, na a harmonic, B, and then the phrase repeats again. C natural. And then it changes here. Sharps. D e sharp. And then G natural instead of G sharp. And 
Okay, so that's the, the new phrase, right? So it starts almost the same, but then it changes into a different, um, different ending. So I would argue that the, the purple phrase is where the third movement actually starts because this is the theme that um, will come back later. Okay, so let's write the fingering down really quickly. One. I do harmonic. Extension two, three, four, one. Two, three, two, four, or four, two, do, 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 two. And then it repeats. I guess. D, 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 one, three. Uh, one, three, one, two. One, two, three, two, one. All right. So if we take a look uh, from measure two, four, uh, four, two, four. A bow. Let's write a bow. So up bow, and then, and then for that G crossover to D string, and then land on the uh, C with the fourth finger, fourth position, and uh. So there, four, that way you're, you're already in position. And then, it's pretty straightforward here.
So, looks like I need to put some fingering in there. One, four, two, three. One, four. All right, not too bad. So the, the this is the main theme, not the main theme. Yeah, I guess it's one of the main themes of the third movement. <laughs> complicated shifts there so let's move on now we get to the the hard part the fast part all right this part is a little bit tricky but it's gonna be okay I'm gonna give you some fingerings so two one Okay, let me just explain this run really quickly and how to practice it. So, uh, first of all, just learn the notes. Ignore the speed. Don't worry about the speed. You'll eventually get it. It'll take a while, but you'll get it, okay? So, uh, just remember we're still in tenor clef. So, starting with B, half position. <laughs> A sharp, B, C sharp, so that's one group. Next group, uh, D sharp, C double sharp, which is also, you know, um, D natural. E, so that's another group, right? And then the next group is F sharp. E sharp, which is also F natural, F sharp, G natural, and then, so that's another group, right? Um, so here, I guess, well, let's figure out the notes first. And then A, F sharp, E sharp, which is F, E, 
D sharp, F sharp, and then A with thumb, C, and then, well, actually this, yeah, there's a couple of options for what's coming, but let me just explain this part right here. So there's a couple of options you can do there. Um, what worked for me is to and just do an extension with the pinky. can also do two one two two one one two four one so that would be either way you should end with the three to one like that so the tricky part here is just getting all the notes and then working out the shifts in between the groups right <laughs> So really just practice those. And then here in the measure 442, um, you can either do all of the beginning notes with first finger. I prefer to do it the thumb position. So thumb two one zero always at shifting So that sounds like this Starting from G I'm gonna do with both separate do it with the thumb uh, mainly because I don't know the, some of the stretches with the third finger is kind of awkward my, my fingers just don't stretch that comfortably and to go fast this goes fast so doing that that's a lot easier motion for so I, I, experiment with it. All you need to do really here beware of the interval, the finger pattern. So what do I mean by that? So here you can see that some for example we start with G A B 
which is whole step, whole step, right? Next one, next group is F sharp, F sharp, G, A, which is half step, whole step. Next group is E, G, F sharp. So it. Next group is G F sharp G not G D E F sharp Next group C sharp D E and then C, B C sharp D and then last is A sharp, C sharp, B, right? So really, um, the important part about there is you have to really know your fingering patterns, the intervals, right? So it's a three finger pattern. If even if you do it with the one, three, one, two, three, you still got to know it's Whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, half step, half step, whole step, like that. So really um, try to practice, don't, don't just practice the four note pattern that's there. Like just don't play only what's written. Don't, don't only play that. You can also play, uh, just make up any note, uh, any patterns, but within that four group note, right? other groupings in that and it's gonna work um, another thing you should practice is just practice the the notes that you're shifting so basically the first notes of each group right so let me color that for you so focus on shifting these two that one's not a shift So you really should be focusing on those notes. So um, just try and get them, in, get them in your ear. Because that, that's basically the scale that we're following, right? Everything else is just fluff. So just um, remember that. Um, it's gonna take a while. Practice it slowly. Just get the notes first, and then the uh, the bowing. Do the shifts like. Just do the thumbs first for a while. Um, take your time learning this part. Uh, it, it, it's not gonna come fast. So, um, yeah. Moving on. Still, we're in this uh, same uh, phrase, sort of. I'm gonna mark it to here. And if we take a look at the notes, and I'm just gonna try and... Let's just look at the first three groups. So, C sharp. <laughs> D sharp and then F uh, E sharp. So it's 
so E sharp, which is F natural, right? D double sharp, which would be an E, so G sharp. Remember from F sharp, G sharp is whole set. G sharp to F double sharp, which is G natural. which is F, G sharp, and then B, B, C sharp, D, Same, same thing, you can do it with first finger. I like to do it with thumb. Um, just remember, it's the same thing. Remember the first note. Uh, first note of each groups. The second time is a bit tricky here because um, this is what I mean by you need to know your um, patterns. Let me just quickly write down the fingerings. Du, 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 du. Two. Two, one. Two, three, two, one. Let's do one, two. Oh, wow. I'm sorry about the horrendous writing. Okay, so if you take a notice uh, of the fingering and the pattern actually, you'll notice that it's the same as the previous one. Um, it's just shifted up a uh, whole tone up. Take, take a listen. Until there. So that phrase, if we just move it up a whole step up, right? We started on B. If we move up half a uh, whole step and then play the same thing. Uh, sorry. I need to practice as well. So um, that um, basically is the same phrase. We're just shifting it half a uh, whole step up. The thing that makes it difficult is there's no harmonics that you can use in this one uh, in the second phrase. That's what makes it a little bit tough. But just practice the same way, four note groups. <laughs> Here you can do either thumb thumb one, thumb thumb one like that, or I don't know. You can do one two two like that. Uh, the parentheses fingering might work better, uh, more consistent also, and in. in faster tempo. Um, up to you. But here, uh, same thing as before. 
four, figure out the uh, the finger pattern. G sharp, A B, F sharp, G sharp A, and then uh, E sharp, which is F natural. F, F sharp, and then G sharp. And then the next, it goes back up, but it changes the pattern. It goes F sharp, G natural, and A, right? So try and do that differently. And that one's also different. comes the fun part. Oh. All right, so uh I mean, I guess the phrase continues, but I'm not mark it with a different color because this idea is going to repeat um, just in different um, keys and things like that. Alright, so here, this section, I personally like to do it in thumb position. Um, instead of going up and down the string. So, for example... I, I like to do it in the, the thumb position because... same string right but I don't know I, I really just like staying in one position it's it's a lot quicker a lot less tiring for your your hand so I don't know you pick your battles also this is a lot easier it's just an A major scale A major, it would be A mixolydian. Um, so, yeah, just and then F sharp, C sharp is fourth down. Okay, so F sharp G, uh, F sharp D, E, F sharp, shift to one, G on the G, and then that way you're in position for the B flat, B flat and C sharp. So this section sounds a little bit crazy. 
Um, but it's not too difficult. Um, that's how it should sound like. Um, but really focus on this. Let's do a different color. All right, what I mean by that. So, this section <clears throat> is always going to be a major sixth in interval. So, uh, if you don't know your major s intervals on your cello, drop me a comment. I'll make a video about it in the future. If there's enough comments about it, I'll, I'll do it quicker. <laughs> so, major sixth. And the blue, the blue line, you can think of it, we're moving that major sixth interval in minor sixth, or sorry, minor third. So, so go minor third up, right? So if we look at the notes, so B flat, B natural, C, C sharp, right? B flat, one, two, three. So, one, two. So, first practice the intervals like that. In half steps, you have to feel all the different half steps. And then another one. Tune with the open strings if you need to. And then from here, it's chromatic down. That's why we practice it all the different half steps. And then from C sharp, it's all also, also um, minor third. Minor third. And then the last group, I do one in thumb. back at here with one and thumb. Uh -huh. So once again, uh, from the scale, third up minor another minor third up and then one two three three uh half steps down chromatic one two three and then from here we go minor third down and then Just like your, I guess, so how your first and thumb finger land, uh, that's just gonna be right in position. And then to get back to the, the scales, just half step back. So very important, um, you know the distances, practice the intervals like that, practice as an interval. 
it, uh, like double stops, like how I do. And also try to do first. Don't don't worry about the that guy. Just practice first in double stops. Just to get used to your uh, bow angle in playing in right between the two strings, right? And then after that, it it's question of just... And this guy, you can do the different rhythms, like long, short, long... Like long short or short long short long like that long uh short uh long short would be Anyway, the idea is if you break up the rhythm, um, your bow will feel a lot more natural in doing it fast. Uh huh. And then it goes on, next part. That's the only thing that's different. And then everything is pretty much the same. extension here. So uh, this will be a minor 6. So B B and D sharp. So just be careful of that. Here is, it's not a minor third, but I, I don't even know how to describe that. It's part of the arpeggio, uh, it's part of the B major chord if you want to think about it like that. So basically you have to think about, it's minor 6th and then half step up major 6th and then another whole step up that's the diff that's how you can find that um, interval and then minor 3rd minor 3rd Three half steps. One, two, three, and then
So this 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 other and remember that uh -huh, so it's minor sixth there again and then minor seventh like that. All right, we got to letter M. Uh, yeah, this this part is where things get really complicated. So take your time. If you don't get it the first time, that's okay. Um, it it really helps to know your thumb position a lot and also your intervals. So I would highly recommend practicing your your intervals, uh, your scales and intervals um, and things like that just to strengthen your your hand mm -hmm. all right let's take a look at the next section uh, let's finish out the page and then I think I'll take a break all mm -hmm. right so next page or next section letter M we're at letter M now Turn it into green. So letter M. So here is the same deal. B natural on the bottom. We're in treble clef now. B natural on bottom. A sharp on the, on the top, or G sharp, or sorry, A flat, G sharp, you, if you want to think of it like that. So sorry, it, forgive me if I'm consulting my my actual score. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> yeah. All right. So uh, same thing. This is just all diminished chords. Not as difficult as the other one. Okay, so if you have trouble hearing how it should sound like, you can pl always play the notes octave lower, right? So A flat, 
and B natural, so if you have trouble hearing that or finding that, A flat. Uh-huh. So A flat, B, D, B natural, E, F, and D. And then A flat and F. That's all diminished, so this one is pretty straightforward. Everything's minor thirds apart. Harmonic D, you can check with that. So, these are all just, if you think about these in blocks, they don't become too difficult. It, it becomes overwhelming if you think about each of the notes. But if you think about it in blocks, it's, yeah. For example, this part. Uh, I do everything separate here, by the way. I should probably specify that. Yeah, so if you practice your major scale in thumb position, doesn't become too difficult here. Yeah, because here they have have you and, uh, the the fingering in the the international music version has you do that and to be honest you're shifting way too much so <laughs> and you can go a lot faster this way like i didn't practice that and i still have muscle memory to do that because it's just a scale right so, uh, I highly recommend this finger, and then... Yeah, let me make sure I didn't just assume things, because... Sometimes I do that, I just think that it's a pattern. So...
slightly different. Everything else is oh the same. So same thing here, um, after minor or major six apart, moving in diminished. We shift down minor third, but we turn the interval into a minor six. how to play fast and how to work up the, uh, the speed uh, after we come back from the break but this part I just want you to know the, the main patterns here um, in, in this section uh, it's pretty once you learn the pattern it doesn't become too difficult it becomes rather repetitive um, but it is really difficult to get to that point so um, have some patience. You're doing. You're. You'll be fine. You'll. You're doing great. So, um, actually, we're gonna go to purple. So, uh. <laughs> Starting from that harmonic A, uh, A. Uh, there it's pretty straightforward. Um, try to keep the sixteenth notes snappy. I don't know why there are dots here, but. You can break it. Okay, so let's just take a look. it up uh, like how it's written here which is perfectly fine um, you can get bigger sound you don't have to save up the bow as much it might be good good thing to take note um, but the, the bow separation in the beginning keep that If it's 
not if it's separating up top, I don't know why it's not separating up here. Okay, so anyway, what I do here is I connect E. Uh, so let's quickly talk about the scales. This would be D, D melodic minor, right? <laughs> Because of the raised sixth and seventh, right? Second scale that we do, I should write the fingerings down here, sorry. All right, so the second time we do that, uh, that sounds a lot more complex than it actually is. Uh, what it actually is is just uh, it's just an arpeggio with half no half step notes. Or it's a half step note approach from the bottom. So So that's actually a really cool trick if you wanna like improvise and things like that. Um take any arpeggios and just add half step below to all the notes, right? Excuse me, A minor, A melodic minor. Right? It's because um, it has the notes of a melodic minor starting from A. We only start from the C. Then we come to the fun part. Yay! Octaves. Hey, what happened? All right, so octaves. <laughs> Here is a big 
big leap. Think of it. I like to think of it. You already have reference to the harmonic position because that's where your thir third finger is. When you get there, you go past. So A, F sharp. That shift might take a while, but how you can practice is just practice the scales in the octaves. This is gonna be a bit difficult. to glist in between the notes the in between each of the notes that way you're feeling really how big you should be stretching your your hand right <laughs> It's not chromatic. It's D, C, B, natural, A, G sharp. So if you can't do the chained bow just yet, um, because that takes a little bit more control in the left hand, just practice the, harmo the, the octaves first. Just a note. the scale and back up the scale practice those octaves um, just practice your uh, scales and octaves as well <laughs> so moving on that's that this is the really difficult part the um, the final difficult part um, that F sharp that high F sharp this is the highest point we'll ever go in this concert thing here is feel that oh feel that first beat that could have been really bad <laughs> feel that first beat Yeah, the T 
tuning there is going to be difficult as well. Just learn the notes first, um, and then you'll, you can work things out. Alright, moving on. So... These are just kind of like... Uh, transitional phrases. One... Thumb. Like that. Mm. Okay, well, we got to end of letter N, N, excuse me, N as in Nancy. Um, so we don't have too much to go, actually. Only two more pages. Um, and really, there's only one new, two new parts, I would say. Well, there's a couple of new parts, but it's not... It's not too difficult. It's not too far off from what we were looking at so far. Um, so, uh, wow, it's already been almost an hour and a half. It's been an hour and a half. Let's take a quick break. I'm going to take a quick breather. Um, we'll come back. I'll come back and finish off the, the concerto. If you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment as well. Um, if you have any specific spots you want to lo look at, um, you can always specify the measure numbers as well. So, um, yeah. So, I'm going to take a break. Thanks for tuning in, uh, and I'll be right back. Alrighty back to the lesson we're actually on the home stretch almost so let's continue working on this from letter O no wow letter O is really long okay so uh, let's just read the notes real quick. to stay on the G string. So it goes like this. fourth finger down you're gonna shift
two, one. So pretty simple. And then um, D major. And then same thing. Same deal. So it'd be extend extended four one four one four three. Separate the bow. Just get rid of this. Oh, like that. Oh. We're doing these three. <laughs> it's horrible. All right, we'll just leave it there. So, th this is the only confusing part, really. One, two, 
Alright, so that should make it a little bit easier. So, D, E, F sharp. Ah, hola, Alberto, que onda? Sharp G, uh, there's half step. And then whole step between B and C sharp. So from here, totally marked it wrong. From here, it is actually false harmonics. Uh, so, how would I put it? Three. Like that, I guess. Okay. D d I'll explain it. So. So, after this high A, we go here. B flat, C, D, E flat, F, F sharp, G, A, B flat, C, D, E, F. So, think of F major here. See, so uh, it, for those who are um, listening, uh, voy a hablar en español. Alberto uh, es mi alumno, era mi alumno. Um, he's asking if the third finger is where the octave would be. Y sí, es, es, básicamente es el mismo lugar donde debería estar el octavo, digamos. <música> Entonces, como piensa siempre así, como ese es como el, el cuarto, ¿no? Pero por eso Vladan siempre decía, um, estudia tus octavas y después tus octavas estudias los armónicos, ¿no? Porque ya queda la posición. Um, let me try and explain that in, in, in English. So, um, for the false harmonics, try and practice the octaves, octave um, scales, because the third, the third finger is where the, uh, where the false harmonics would be for all the, all the positions. All right, espero eso ayudo um, to do to, to that. Um, okay, entonces, and, uh, so it starts from here. B flat, C, D, E flat, F. So really think about this F. That is not an F. That's an F. Right? C, D, E flat, F. Yep. 
So try and arrive to that F natural because that's the the scale that we're in. F F natural G A B flat C D E F And also another tip for playing good false harmonics, try and play really close to the bridge. If you play If you play near in the middle of the contact point, it's not going to speak as easy or as loudly. So have good, good contact on the near the bridge. And it's gonna sound really breathy, like <sighs> that's okay, that's just how it sounds in the false harmonic world. Um, so yeah, this part is very difficult because it's a giant scale, right? We're going from this C all the way up to this F, so we're covering a lot of octaves. Complicated. Try to practice the thumb, th uh, the thumb position. Your thumb needs to be very strong for the false harmonic section. Um, the the difficult thing also might be. From this high A to this this. So try and land in the the extended position that's gonna be the hard part um, but other than that pretty straightforward try and relax breathe and everything all right so moving on uh, this doesn't have a letter let's put a letter to it because it is a different section uh, let's put O prime Oh. Okay. O prime. Okay. If we look at O prime, let's color it in. We go back to the noodly part. But this time we're in. Um, a different key. So before we were in A major, or not A major. Technically D major. Now we're in B major, I guess E major. Same thing. Um, yeah, here, here it's in thumb position. Um, so, I don't know. Try and keep everything in thumb position. It's easier. Make your life easier. Why make it complicated? Alright, so same deal. Let's get rid of these slurs. One, dumb, two, three, two, three, dumb. What? Oh. Alright, 
so here, redo the down bow. One, two, three, thumb. I believe it was one, one. Alright, same deal, right? Here, just practice. Uh, remember that you're in B. Um, the framework for B major or B mixolydian to be exact. sixth interval moving in minor third so uh di diminished we're gonna do diminished disminuido we're doing two thirds and then three times chromatic backwards one two three and then minor third minor third minor third and then same thing. And here, just pure diminished. position. Oh goodness, yeah, this part. This part's all thumb position. If you know your thumb position, you're golden. If not, it's nightmarish, but but just practice it slowly. So we're in thumb position here. First finger, three thumb, one two three.
very weird um, where I'm putting the thumbs and things like that, but it actually, uh, it don't make sense. It makes, I don't know, it makes sense. Take a look at. Let's turn it into blue. This last section. So if we look at the blue, we end. Let's just take a look at from the before. Right? <laughs> should already be there from the position before right move your thumb whole step half step whole step Yeah, there we go. 
There we go. Yeah, tricky part. The the blue section really isn't too difficult. Um, just learn the. steps are between your first and thumb and then when you get to the triplet section just move your thumb according to how wide the shifts are right um that's about it for this part and then now we're in the final home stretch so we're back to the slow theme This will be letter, still letter O. Okay. And if you take a look, it sounds like the beginning, basically. It is the beginning. Uh, so let me just play through it. We start up bow. Yeah, so this part, this part is literally the same as the beginning of the movement. Um, so I don't think there's much to be um, said about here. Um, as far as uh, fingerings go, uh, there, there a lot can be said about here. But um, yeah, so remember that measure 552 till letter P, it's basically the same thing um, as the beginning. All right, letter R, let's go to letter R. We're now in the, basically the coda of this piece. And this is actually probably one of the more fun part. Um, so, goes a lot faster here. Um, it's Bolto Allegro, uh, I guess, here. Uh, I don't know why it says cadenza here. Usually there isn't a cadenza. So going from R, starting up bow. One, two, 
one, a bow. Alright, so it goes like this. Alright, so first phrase is that. Pretty straightforward. Four. Four. And I connect that all the way. That's such a good line. phrase right so bowing wise try and keep it all smooth and also keep your left hand vibrato lively um, starts mezzo forte uh, um, and I'll tell you don't get too excited too too quickly here um, so the second phrase goes until there Second phrase, same thing, same exact line. And then here starts the the whole syncopated section, right? Two, three, three, one, four, two. All right, so this part sounds like this. Sorry, uh, where am I? Uh, 
That's weird. Ah, uh, yeah, that's why. Here's one, two, one, two. All right, there you go. I remembered the fingering, so... G sharp, harmonic A, and then here, normal position, and then, practice without the doubles, um, just practice the notes, so B, C sharp, D, B, C sharp, D, E, F, G sharp, A, B, G sharp, A, B, C sharp, D, E, oh, sorry, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, A. So think about A major there. Um, and yeah, so this last section is just kind of like a, a, a boisterous section. It starts from mezzo forte, and it's a big old crescendo until the end. So just remember that. So it, and it goes fast. So it's one da di da di 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 almost almost in one. Dun 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 da di 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 di. So it goes like this. fingerings um, I think those fingerings will help you a lot in terms of um, just getting around I, I, I feel like the fingering for this and um, what I given you is a lot more consistent um, than the fingering that's on the sheet music um, both digital and on paper so yeah I hope that helped um, if you have any questions, just drop a line in the comments and, and I'll try and get back to you as soon as possible. So, um, congratulations, you made it to the end of the concerto. Um, I hope this really, really helped. Um, it's, a, it's a deceptively difficult um, concerto. So, take your time learning it. The third movement will take a lot of time getting used to. Um, it's not... Uh, it has a really strange structure to it so um, stick to it uh, practice your thumb position scales practice your intervals and I think everything will be good for you all right well take care and I'll see you next time happy practicing bye